Hi and welcome to Heavy Bag Trainer Volume 1. This tape, which is a companion tape to the Focus Smith tape and the Advanced Trapping uh, Panatukan tape, we're going to try and teach you how to use the heavy bag as a, intelligently and as a, a piece of equipment that's going to enhance your power, your time and your speed and so forth. In it, we're going to show how to use the hands, the elbows, the knees and the feet. There's a lot of heavy bag uh, tapes out in the market right now and each one of them has, they, they all have valid points. And in this one, as I said, we're going to teach you how to use the bag uh, for your average person. You don't have to hit the bag 10 times a week or, you know, hit it like for, for three hours at a time. Maybe three, four, five rounds would, would do, you, uh, do you good. Uh, just mixing it with your shadow boxing and so forth. So the basic thing here is you want to go in if you're going to use a heavy bag, be warmed up, have done some shadow boxing, maybe some skipping put your bag gloves on, or if you're hitting hard or you, you feel your hands are sensitive, put a pair of 16 ounce, 14, 16 ounce gloves on, boxing gloves, and making sure you don't tear up your hands too much. Uh, my instructor Larry Harsel taught me that there's four ways you should use the, the bag. One would be just with the, the bare hands, one would be with the bare hands and the bandage, one would be just with the bag glove, and one would be the bandage in the bag glove or the bandage in the boxing glove. And depending on how you want to train, how hard the bag is, how hard you hit, you can take any one of those variables. I would say though that you should, if you're hitting hard, make sure you're bandaged up. That way you're going to protect your wrist, you're going to protect your thumb, more than just the hand here. And again, uh, for a beginner, intermediate, I would say don't, uh, don't work in a bag that's too heavy. A lot of people like to make the bag really heavy and hit it to get power. You don't really need that. The power is going to come from timing, um, from your speed, from your placement, from your accuracy, as well as actually having good body mechanics. So with that said, we're going to work on some, um, some basic techniques. As we did in the focus mid tape, your jab, your cross, your hook, your uppercut, um, your Mexican hook, your overhand, that's going to be your basic box and punches. And we're going to work them here, show a couple of different variations, um, and you'll hopefully enhance you. Again, make sure you're warmed up, neck, shoulders, arms, legs, make sure you're fully warm, your bag's there, because anytime you hit the bag, if you don't hit it properly, you're going to get recoil off the bag. And that's part of what, what bag training is about. Every time you hit the bag, you're finding out if your placement, if your um, positioning is, is correct. And if it isn't, you'll feel a jolt go right through your body. And if you do do that, if you hit incorrectly when you're, when you're not warm, then you're going to be... Um, you're going to be injured or you're going to maybe get a mishap. So with that said, okay, we're going to, we're going to, going to jab here. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that we're here, hands are up, very important. Nice, stable, but movable stance. Yeah? We don't want to be, we don't want to be boom, just standing like this and just crashing the back. Good movement. So here, boom, jab like that, one, boom, and out. As we jab, you want to make sure that when we hit here, that we go straight in. Now, sometimes what's going to happen is when you hit, you're going to move to the side, you're going to move to this side, you're going to move straight in. That depends on who you're fighting and uh, how they move. So, first things first, make sure you've got a jab that is recoiling the bag back, very important. Here, boom, like this. So go one, boom, and back. Now, once you have done that and you're moving off the bag, move in. One, move in. Again, when you move in, make sure that your hands are up, boom, that you're in good position. Now we're going to jab, slip to the left. When I slip to the left here, I make sure that my arm is up, here, boom, nice and good position. Boom. We're going to slip to the right now. So when you do this, boom, same thing. This is here, yeah, we're up. Again. Boom. Again, when we get to the combinations, you're going to find that each position is going to set you up for a different punch. Okay, we're going to go to the right cross now. So when we hit the right cross, what's a right cross but nothing but a jab from the rear hand? So when we go here, boom, in straight, in straight. Again, when you do this, you're going to find that the recoil will come back. If you have your elbow out like this, you're going to recoil back. It's going to come back like this. You want to make sure it's nice and straight. Yeah? So you're pushing off here. Very, very important. This foot is very important. You don't want to be hitting 
and finding that you're coming back. And that's what happens a lot of time when you hit the bag. People come in, <coughs> hit like this, they've got no back, uh, back uh, power off the back leg. So again, when you come in here, <coughs> boom, make sure you're coming off this. <coughs> boom. Now when you do this, as with the, the jab, you're going to find that there's different ranges that you can hit in. Sometimes you're going to hit long, a long cross. So that's going to mean you're going to go, you're going to come really long from out here. Boom, like this, yeah. Sometimes you're going to find that you're going to mix your cross with something like an uppercut and a cross in here, yeah, like this. So when we go in this time, it's going to be a short cross in here. So again, you're going to have the long cross, which will be out, short, boom, obviously just in just a little bit. In both of these, you want to be snapping your body, very important. So when you go one, a turn and a torque, quickly. If this is moving slow, the hand will be moving slow. Yeah? And, the, and obviously if this is turning, he sees, the, the opponent sees it, and they're going to counter you. So as soon as I move, the build up is quick. Boom, like this. And again, the same in the jab. When you go with the jab, boom. It's an explosive movement. Boom, and then, and then, yeah? Okay, so when you put the two together now, you're going to go jab, cross. Very basic position, really basic uh, hand movement. The thing about this though is that if your timing between the punches is wrong, then you won't hit the person with the cross. It's not going to happen. So when we go here, a lot of people go one, drop it back, and then two. You really want it to go one, two, <coughs> boom. <coughs> boom. So when this, this hand is just about to come back, <coughs> this one's already out. Because the jab's a setup. The jab most of the time is going to set you up for the right cross. So, <coughs> boom, and then. <coughs> <coughs> You'll see each time that I land, I'm in good position. I don't kind of throw the jab, throw the cross, can you fall off? I don't throw it, hit it here and get recall coming back through my body. Again, if you do, that's a signal. It's telling you you're doing the punching correctly. So if I hit here and I feel the recoil coming back, I realize either the bag's too heavy for me or that I'm hitting incorrectly. If you're hitting incorrectly, go and check out. There's a couple of things you can gauge. One will be your ankle, the knee, the hip, shoulder, elbow, and then your wrist. When you hit, the same as in, in the hitting and the focus moves, your fist and your wrist are true, so you want to kind of curl, curl in here and make sure this is nice and strong yeah, when you go. It doesn't have to be tense from the beginning, but it wants to be nice and, nice and firm. So it can be relaxed, but when it hits, it's firm. Very, very important. And then you're hitting. That's another thing that might happen is you might hit the bag and get some um, a strain in the wrist. So again, warm up nice and, nice and gradually. Okay, so again, once we go here, one, two, so it should be a one and a half beat, not a two beat. So again, <coughs> boom, and we're in. Yeah. <coughs> we're in. <coughs> okay, so that's a basic that you want there, a, a basic jab cross. Now you can double up on it, you can go jab, jab, cross, jab, cross, jab, jab, cross, jab, jab. Jab, double cross, jab. The, the double cross is something that I like to go on here for the simple reason. Once you hit the person with the first cross, if you move in and you still have the, the placement, then the second cross can really do a, can finish the job that the first one never. So again, when you go in here, we go in, and that would be a, a time when you would go from a long cross to a short cross. So you would see the motion, it's long, and then it's short, yeah? So again, Boom, move in. Move in. You'll notice what happens here is when I've thrown the jab and I've thrown the long cross, so this hand goes here. This is like a push on the face. This is to stop the person from covering and push them. Yeah? So again. Boom and move in. One of the other positions that we're going to go in is like an overhand. An overhand is kind of hard, a hard punch to work on the bag. When you go here like this, to come across the bag at a 45 is very difficult. 
what some people do is they'll turn, turn this hand over. The only thing is, if you have rotator cuff problems, any problems with the shoulder, it'll come back and it'll kick back on you here. Also, the position of the elbow changes from being straight, it now turns over. And it puts a little bit more stress on the, on the wrist here. So when we work this, it comes over the top. And I'm going to be honest, this is, this is a, a punch that I don't do because uh, I've actually hurt my hand doing this. But I know good pro boxers that use it all the time. And it's not so much a power shot as a placed shot. It just goes over the guard. Because sometimes you're hitting the person, if they're here, you're hitting them straight, and they, straight on, but they avoid it. So you can have to come in over the other side with the punch. So the punch, instead of coming this way, comes over this way, yeah? Okay, so you see if it's an angle. One is straight, one is over the top, yeah? So when you go here, boom, it pulls. And again, if you look at the difference, one is straight, and one is over the top. Now, sometimes that's called a corkscrew punch because it screws in like this, right over the top here. Um, and the overhand, boom, would probably come something like that. Bang, over a 45, yeah? So what you're, what you're doing now is using the jab as a setup hand and this as your power hand. And the first thing we did was throw the jab to get placement, to get an understanding of where the, the person is, and then, boom, throw the cross. So you've got a one and a half beat going. Then we said, okay, you jab, and then you double up on the cross. So you go from a long cross to a short cross. Then you jab, and then you come with the overhand or the corkscrew hook, um, depending on what suits you. Again, I would say that if you're going to practice, I would shadow box it first. Get the motion first so you can, you can tailor the motion for yourself. Work on the focus moves with a partner, and then work on the bag. I wouldn't go in the bag right away and start wheeling away because if you haven't got the technique, you could, you could injure yourself. Next thing we're going to do is go back to the, uh, the left hook. Really good punch, lots of different ways of doing it. When we come in here, what I'm going to do is hit like this, and it's going to be palm in to me. Sometimes you'll go palm down, like this. So you can go palm in, you can go palm down. Again, depending on who teaches you and the way they fight, they're going to say their way is right. So when we do this, Boom. As, the main thing is, as long as you're shifting and you've got good power off this leg, you know, you're, pushing, you're pushing off and your hip is moving. It's really, really important that your hip turns here. If you want to accentuate the movement, this has to move fast. If this is moving slow, that's going to trail behind and you're going to be hitting with the arm, which in all likelihood isn't going to do too much. So when we go in here, the first thing we're going to do is just throw the hook itself. So we just go one, <coughs> boom, two. The motion... It's just from here, boom, hitting like this, boom, with a turn, boom, with a turn here. So again, boom, we're in, yeah, nice and relaxed, back, boom, nice and easy like that, boom, just coming off it like that. If you want to go a little bit deeper, then you go more into the bag, which we'll do here. When I come like this, I'm going to switch in, I'm going to hit the body, and then hit the head. Yeah, okay. Uh, the first one, we kind of kept back a little bit. This one, we're staying in close. And we spoke about earlier on about the, the position after you've jabbed. This is when you've jabbed, you hit, and you switched in here. So you kind of covered. So the person's over here, boom, and then you'll rip the, the left hook in to the head or to the body. Yeah, okay. So we'll just show it here. So when we're in here, relaxed, <coughs> body shot, <coughs> head shot. Yeah. Boom. When you hit the body shot, come back into position. Boom. And then come back to the head. So one. Boom. Two. Again. Like this. Yeah. Okay. We go back here. The same can be done with the rear hand here. But what you want to do is sometimes if you're in, a, in this position with the rear, it's kind of hard to catch. So what some people do is to make it longer, boom, they'll turn. So it's kind of like a, like the corkscrew hook, but done in the low level. So it just catches them in and around the side. If you get hit with body shots, it can crumble people. They're not used to it. So when you go here, boom, you'll turn. You'll see the difference here. If I try and punch like this, 
you know, like a normal hook, it's not gonna do the job. What I want you to do is, I want to make sure, boom, I'm out here. And again, like the cross, if I went to the body with the cross, boom, it would be straight. Here, it would go around the side. So when I'm here, it'd go around the side. A little bit different, give me a little bit more um, reach, a little bit more range, and a different angle to hit the person with. One of the main things in, in uh, boxing or martial art in general is you want to be adaptable. And your t the tools that you have when you're throwing tools, you want to be able to throw them from different angles and be effective when you throw them. So with this, even though this, this isn't one of my favorite you know, punches, I'm more right cross, left hook, jab type of fighter, it is something that I like to know for a couple of reasons. One is obviously I want to be able to practice it and use it. And the other thing is if the person comes back at me with it, I want to know how to defend it. Which is obviously very important. So when we go here, if you're in the, the rear hand hooking mode and you're at long range, achoo, boom, you'll hit the body. Yeah, here. Achoo, boom. Now, sometimes you'll be in close, yeah? When you're in close like this, we're gonna go into this more deeply later. But when I'm in here, achoo, I want to hit here. Now most of the time, if I go like this, I'll switch leads. Yeah? And this is something that Larry Hartzell showed me years ago. Uh, Sifu Hartzell phenomenal uh, boxing trainer, he showed me this and I never really understood it for about two years. I never understood why he had the shift until I realized that my body shots weren't working too well from that position. So what he would teach is a jab, a slip, body and then head. So I'm in the same position I was with the lead hand. Yeah? I've just gone from rear to lead. Very important. When you switch lead like that, you want to make sure that you're covered and you're prepared. Meaning that I've covered myself with a jab, or a cross, or a hook, or something else as I go in. If I'm going into the bag, I don't want to think of it as a bag. I want to think of that as an opponent, somebody that's going to, going to hit me back. So it's all fine and well that I walk into the bag, I hit a good hook, and I think I'm doing well. It's no good though if, if I try that on an opponent, and I go like this, bang, and I get caught in center line, I get caught out. So when we do this, you can either cross, you could, uh, we'll demonstrate, you can go cross, Boom, you move then behind the jab cross and then hit the shot or hit the shot to the body. Yeah, okay. So again, move, boom, and move then. And when you back out, always hit when you back out as well. Even if you don't hit heavy, it protects you as you move back. Yeah, okay. You could do the same if you go one, jab, jab hook, cross hook, excuse me. So when you go one, and move in. Yeah. And you're going to find that a lot of people that are good in the inside will use that. In the outside range, so they might not be too maneuverable or whatever, but what they'll do is they'll use their tools to get them in. And that's all they really want is to go from here to here. A fighter like Roberto Duran, an awesome inside fighter, would hit, shift, boom, and then move in. Yeah? He wouldn't just kind of, well very rarely, would you just walk in to the person and then hit, yeah? because you're going to get you're going to get tagged. So what have we got so far? We've got the jab. You can jab, you can go straight in, slip to the side, or you can go straight in to the bag, or you can go jab, slip to the side, jab, slip to this side. We've got our cross, long range cross, short, close in cross. We've got our corkscrew hook from the outside, boom, going over the top, or boom, you could put the overhand in. As I said before, the overhand's kind of hard to get on the bag, you know, so I don't practice it too much. I find I get jarred. And even some of the good boxing trainers I've, I've trained, with, trained under have told me that when you're, when you're doing this, it's, it's kind of hard on the shoulder and on, on, the, on the elbow. Yeah? So for me, I kind of leave that one and go more with the corkscrew hook. Yeah? The other thing we've, we've de developed so far is our left hook, maximizing the use of the body, fast twitch, fast body motion, boom, body to head. Very important when you do this that you're covered. If, if you're doing it, if you're in, in, in a bar and you're standing here, that's okay. You can just pop somebody. You're already in. You've bridged the gap already. So there's no problem there. If maybe you're more in a sport context, kickboxing, boxing, whatever, you're coming from the outside range to the inside range. So you, unless you're up against somebody that's half asleep or isn't very good, you know, or both, you know, then you want to. Move. Boom. I come behind something. I must have firepower to, to uh, intimidate this person, to occupy the space as I move in. Very, very important. The other thing we spoke about was the hook to the body. 
Yeah, okay, when we go here. When we hook the body, again, you can hook it from the rear, yeah, which I will do later on. But when you hit here, it's a good shot, but usually that's a shot to lead into something else, yeah, okay? And it, I don't feel it, it's quite as powerful as the lead hand shot, yeah, which is quite unusual because usually it's the rear shots that are the more powerful. It is powerful and it is really um, uh, put in place when, you, when you, you come in and you switch. Number one, what you've done to your opponent is you've switched, if you're an orthodox, to southpaw, which throws a lot of people anyway. The second thing is, it's added power and leverage to your technique, yeah, okay? So when you move in, if you practice it, you could just shift, one, two, yeah? Shift, one, and two, and then come back. And again, when you drop, try not to drop, uh, when you go in, try not to drop your hands. Shift here, yeah? I'm covered, and I'm covered again, and I'm covered, and I go back, yeah? And as I move out, I'll put my hand here, I'll throw a jab, I'll throw something at them just to occupy that line. Next punch we're going to cover is an uppercut. An uppercut, really, you can have um, different, different ways of using it on the bag. Sometimes I'll miss the bag altogether. So if I go in for a combination, I might go hook, uppercut, uh, hook. So if I go here, I'll just miss, I'll miss the bag. The reason for that is what I've done is I've hit the guy in the head, and then I've lifted his head up and then I've hit him here, yeah? So really what I'm working is two left hooks, yeah? There'll be other times that the, the accent, the emphasis, will be more on the uppercut. So when we're here, <coughs> boom, same. <coughs> boom, and it's in. I'm working, <coughs> in close. <coughs> Pulling in. <coughs> when you get it, you want to try and dig your knuckles right underneath where you think his chin is going to be, yeah? Like this. Now, sometimes you're going to drop and you're going to put into the body. It's a really, absolutely horrible shot to get caught with. If the guy gets under you and he can rip this in, it's a sickening sensation. And as I said before, and I like people say, this is the pain and the head shot is anesthesia. When you, when you hit someone with a body shot, and I've been hit with quite a few, and I'm like, oh, jeez, and then boom, and then the head shot comes. The, your head hurts, your body hurts, you don't know which way you go, and that's when the barrage comes. That's when you've got to be really good defensively or, have a lot of guts, yeah? So when we go in here again, I'm coming with the rear uppercut, yeah? Okay, here, boom. Really important, I bend my knees. If I throw my, my hand like this, you know, that's fine, that's okay, that's cool. And maybe lift them, yeah? But against a good fighter, against somebody that knows what they're doing, you want to be ripping your shots in. I mean, absolutely ripping them in, yeah? So when you go here, I boom, I boom, I boom. And each time it comes back and I'm covered. So if I've lifted his head, left hook comes back. You'll notice the body mechanics shift. One, two, one, two, one, two. Knees are bent, shift up, boom, and then explode with the left hook. Lift his head up, boom, and then take him out with the left hook. Again, when we go to this, here, sometimes what I'll do is I'll stay inside and then back out, okay? It's going to go in a minute. So when you go like this, but one, two, Boom, and then come. Other times, you're going to stay in. Yeah? It's going to whack the uppercut in, boom, and then hit the left hook, and maybe go back in the uppercut or other close range technique. You go with the lead hand, basically the same thing. You want to dip, lift it up, get in. Here, boom, and then you'll see it just jolts the bag up. Usually, when you use the lead uppercut, the follow up's either going to be the elbow or the right cross, or maybe if you shift in the right hook. Yeah, okay? Sometimes when you come off that, you'll come up back and finish with the left hook. So when we do this here, a shift, boom, and left, and left, just a jolt. You'll notice that when I go here, I push off. This is very important. This leg is your post leg. It's pushing off, you know, like this. So over here, boom, lift it and in. Lift it and in. Lift it and in. And again, when you look at this, what happens, the head comes up or the body gets folded, yeah, okay? If you hit the body, <coughs> boom, you're hitting him a shot here. You might have occupied him on the upper line, <coughs> boom, and then rip in to the, uh, to the body here, yeah, okay? So we have two things there. One is a rear uppercut, one is a lead uppercut. Rear uppercut, usually you have to be in close. It's hard to throw it from here, yeah? Rear uppercut, you maybe got a little bit more distance, somebody like Marvin Hagler, 
used to come in and throw his rear uppercut from or well, jabbing range, yeah? Throw it in and, and then fall up with the right cross. Um, for your average individual, it's a little bit harder, yeah? So I would say your lead gives you a little bit more distance, boom, so your follow up's gonna be a little bit different. Your rear is gonna be a little bit closer, yeah? So you might, you might have followed it, uh, came with a cross, and then an uppercut, boom, and then a hook, you know, or so forth. And then with your, with your lead uppercut, you may have jab, cross, uppercut, and that's, it, that's to set you up as you go in. As I said before, as you go in, you're going in in increments. I can't just walk up and plant an elbow in the back. It's ridiculous, it doesn't happen, you know. What we want to do is make sure we go in with firepower. And that's what we're going to go into next. Now that we understand the basic mechanics of the, the single shots, the jab, the cross, the hook, the uppercut, the overhand, the, the Mexican hook and the corkscrew hook, then we're going to have to put them together. Obviously, you could take somebody out with one shot, it's not impossible. Um, there's some people that are very, very good at that. They can just pick the spot. Jeff Thompson is one. Pick the spot, take the guy out, hit him in the chin. For some people, um, myself included, it's a little bit harder. Um, you're going to have to put some combinations together. And the combinations can be from hand to elbow to knee to foot, or any one of those. It could be from foot to knee to elbow to hand. It could be any one of those things. It could take into grappling range or whatever. The main thing is when you hit in combination, it's a logical combination, um, and it makes sense. You're not jumping from throwing a cross to jumping an axe kick or you know jumping out. It has to be a logical combination. So when we go in here, we're going to go through some basic combinations, but very uh, important ones. Um, it shouldn't be overlooked. The basics can never be overlooked. You should be uh, making sure you're working these all the time. As Bruce Lee said, it's like a carpenter sharpening his tools. You want to make sure that each time you work the bag, you work all your basics. And if you want to do some fancy stuff, do that after you've done uh, your main routine. Okay, let's go. So again, we started off earlier on. We said, we're going to jab cross. That's going to be our first thing. <coughs> Boom, one, two, yeah, we're back. <coughs> one, two, we're back. <coughs> One, two. Now, as a general lead in, we're going to have to figure out something to do after that, yeah? So we'll jab cross. Either we're going to come back out and jab, which you might go, boom. So we move back out, jab cross, jab, boom, and move out. Or we can jab cross and move in, which may lead to the uppercut or to the left hook or both, yeah? So, So what you've done is you've come off both these punches. One, jab cross, into the uppercut or jab cross, into the head hook. Now, then you can start mixing and matching it. Jab high, cross low, boom, hook high. So if we go here, we jab high, take his attention. Then we throw a couple of jabs out, boom, and then move back up. I always pull the bag into me after I've hit. For the simple reason, I think when I've hit him, maybe I'm gonna throw him, I'm gonna trap him, Take the head, clinch, take them down, choke them, whatever. I'm not taking it from the viewpoint of where I'm hitting them and it's finished. I have to check them, yeah, okay? Again, when you go in, one, two, boom, we're in. Move in. Now, when we come in now, sometimes you'll fake the jab and throw the cross on its own. When you fake the jab, you want to make sure that you've hit him a good jab first, yeah? So when you're working the bag, <coughs> hit a few jabs, relax, boom. <coughs> so you know now your opponent's felt the jab, then fake it, <coughs> and then move into a combination. One of my favorites is just cross hook. Very simple, again, very effective, because the cross will occupy center line. And if it's been hit with the jab, it's more than likely to be parrying that. If the cross comes through, you want to get rid of that or slip it. As he slips it, boom, left hook comes across. So again, we go one, hit my jab, I'm feel it, feet, and then move in. Again, you're kind of moving in and in increments. You're pushing off, push shuffle. So again, we go one, boom, and we're in here. Yeah, again, boom, we're in. And again, as I said before, sometimes you'll double cross. You go one two and then back. Another one of my favorite combinations because um, it really it really lends itself to getting in close, getting in tight um, with firepower. So there's 
Boom. Nice and tight. You're keeping it tight. You're not um, overextending. And as I said before, long range cross, short range cross, boom. And you've got the left hook coming in there. Yeah. Again, some fighters like to stay in long range. Some people like to just move and then move back out. That's fine too. Move here. Shift. Move back out like this. You can move in circles, you can move around the bag, anything like that. As long as you're keeping your, your hands up, you're shifting. Sometimes your hands will drop. It's a fact of life. It doesn't matter how many times you train, your hands can drop, you can get hit. Try and be aware of it. Try and keep your hands up all the time. Very important. When you get engrossed in the bag, sometimes you can forget you know, what you're actually practicing. You know that it should be a, a live opponent you're going against. Make sure it's up. If you can get somebody, if you've got a good training partner, they can hold the bag for you. They can hold it there and then just coach you from the back, yeah? Hold the bag lightly, let you go, coach you, hands up, boom, whatever. Throw out different combinations for you to do, yeah? Okay, so what's our ma major premise here? We're using the jab as a lead in most of the time. The jab is a punch that's going to be, boom, getting it, uh, bridging our gap as we move in. Once we've done that, usually the cross but by no means, not always. Now, once we're into the inside line and we've gone in, yeah, okay, we've got to boom, put our punches, our hooks, our uppercuts, you know, whatever together. This is when you're going to start exploding. This is when you've really got to be explosive, yeah. Now, you could clinch and you could hit and you can move, you can clinch, you can hit and move, but really, you want to train so as when you get in there, you're hitting all the time, yeah, okay. Especially in a street fight, when somebody's trying to grab you, you lift the head, you come in, boom, you push them off, you get on to the next guy, he moves in, boom, you hit him, you shift them off, you move them. So it's also very, very, very good for conditioning, yeah, okay. So once we get in here, boom, I'm in. So I want to stay here and then work, yeah. Usually what I'll do is I'll throw four, between four and six hooks on the high line as my first gauge, yeah, okay. So once I'm in, move to here, move in, move in, move in. So I'm just going to blitz some of that. Not a very technical way of doing it, if you like, because you're just throwing six hooks, boom, 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 boom. But what it does do is it rings his bells. Yeah. So when we're in here, we've moved in. One, two, four, five, six, boom. Back out, yeah, okay. Next combination, again, very simple. You're gonna go from body to head. So when you, when you go in here, we're in, we're gonna, so we'll hit four, we'll hit one, body and in head, in, body and head, boom, like this. One, two, three, four. So you've gone from the body, and as we said earlier on, when you hit the body, Hopefully he'll drop. When he drops, more than likely, hopefully, he's going to pull his hand down. Boom. And then you're going to put the head shot in there. So, again, the body shot should lead to the head shot. Yeah? Okay, and come in there. Now, when you go, sometimes you'll mix it. So you'll maybe go body, head one side, and then come back to the head the other side. And again, the body, your body has to be talking. So when you go one, boom, and move in. Move in and move. So, if you imagine the person's here, you got your head here. Boom! So you're exploding with different punches. Yeah, going through them, head to body, body to head. The other thing you want to be bringing in is your uppercuts in the middle line. If you're hitting them from the side, that's cool, but. If he knows what's happening in a boxing match, then you can maybe cover. So if he's covering the side, boom, swing one up the middle, boom, and then come back down. So when you go in here, sometimes, so you'll be putting these in, boom, yeah, together, and coming back, yeah. So you'll be changing your lines of attack. Obviously very important. One, two, three, four, boom, up through the middle, over the top, coming back. Something's moving out. So if we go like this, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, you've come in here. What feels good now? Left hook. Maybe short right cross. What feels good? 
And you have to work that out yourself. You have to say, well, when I throw the left hook, if my, my, my foot is positioned here, what feels good? Well, certainly not a backhand, yeah? It'll be boom, probably a right, a right hook. So you have to feel your body, get used to the, get used to the positions that your body will be in and the punches you can throw from those positions. Very, very important. So again, as a, a rule of thumb, when you go here, hit the body, hit the head. So what do we do first? Six shots to the head, one, two, three, four. Uh, body and then head. Then it was body, body, head, head. Yeah, okay? Then we had body, body, head, head. Up through the middle, boom, come back with whatever. Yeah? So you're occupying him all the time. You must keep pressure on the person. Absolutely must. If, if you uh, want to win the fight, you won't win the fight by standing back like this. Yeah? Um, so when they go in, boom, make sure that he feels your power, he feels your speed and you're in a good position to deliver the, your, your tools. Yeah? Okay, if we come in off like the cross, again, same thing. As I move in, boom, same thing, cross uppercut. Boom and in. Boom and in. Once you've done that, boom, then you can shift. Stay in here, boom and move. Yeah? So use the punch bag you know, as an opponent. Think about it. You don't have to be ultra aggressive, you don't have to be like all hyped up, but boom, be mentally tuned in that this is a person and this is a person that can do, do you damage, they can inflict pain on you. So you want to get rid of that. Up till now we've only talked about our hands and how we're going to use them as, uh, as weapons. Obviously as I said in the beginning, there's four major weapons you have in, in your body. Your hand, elbow knee and foot. Obviously you have subsections of that. You could use your shin, you could use different parts of the knee, you could use your forearm, you could use your bicep, you could use your head, shoulder, hip, you know, loads of different things. For this what we're going to do is concentrate first of all on the elbow, how we're going to work that in with the hands. Fantastic tool. Doesn't need too much power if you pinpoint it right, but really, really good tool for uh, taking somebody out. Again, I want to reiterate, when I'm talking about taking somebody out, that's if you have the, the moral uh, justification for doing so. You certainly don't want to be smashing people across the head if they don't, if they don't deserve it or if it's not needed. So um, when, we're, when we're using this, this is a very, very powerful tool. Make sure that you use it nice and, uh, well, not gently, but in, in appropriate, uh, at the appropriate time. Okay, so what we're going to do now is go from the, the rear first. Yeah, okay? So we're going to snap the elbow out. It doesn't want to be a push. Now, if I hit and I hit with the forearm, it's a good shot. If I hit with the elbow, much better. Um, nice, it's good if you can get some elbow pads or even some knee pads, put them on your elbows and then to use so as you, can, you, you don't skin them too much. Yeah? Using a longer bag now gives us more opportunity to, to play from uh, bottom to top. When we do this here, boom, one, boom, relax, relax. So it goes in one, and this is this comes in. It's really important you get the point of the elbow in. Yeah, very very important. One, boom, and then, and then, and then, and then. And then. So when we go into this, the twist is very important. Okay, really important. Just like when you threw, through the right cross, this is almost the same. So you could go one. Right cross, right elbow. Right cross, right elbow. Right cross, right elbow. The main thing though at first is to get the elbow itself and to get it nice and sharp. Now we're going to go to the lead elbow. Go lead, basically the same. It's like uh, throwing a left hook. Yeah? You go here, one. Left hook goes, you look at the position, boom, comes over like this. Left elbow, basically the same. Comes over. Catches with the tip of the elbow here. Again, if you catch with the forearm, good shot. Catch with the elbow, excellent shot. So we're here, snap it, one. Snap, snap, snap. Obviously you can put them together, yeah? You could go left hook, right elbow. So I'll go one. Now when we start this, a lot of times when I train, I'll put my head on the bag. Because I'm talking to the camera, I'm talking to you, it's kind of difficult for me to do that. But I'll, I'll do this just now. So I'm gonna go one, ash, ash, boom, two, ash, 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 ash. Okay. Now, same thing. You could go cross and then lead the elbow. 
One, and then two, and rip it in. So when I go like this, right cross, left elbow, boom, and then, and then, and obviously you can make it part of any combination, uppercut, elbow, rear uppercut, elbow, rear hook, lead elbow, lead hook, rear elbow, lead hook, rear up elbow, yeah, lots of different types of elbows you can do, you can start putting them in like this, yeah, usually for me what I do is I'll, I'll put this here, yeah, and this signifies that I'm beginning to fight inside, yeah, and I put my hand here, this signifies I'm trapping, and then this, this puts it in, so I go one, two, and then three, one, two, and then three, and then I begin to put some other shots in, yeah, so sometimes what you'll be doing is you'll do hand combination, back out, grab, and then put the elbow in here, so if I'm in, I should go through something like the four punches we did before, the guy's kind of like almost out, grab, and then finish, yeah, okay, so go one, back, and back, and then back, obviously you could finish it the other way, lead, yeah, lead, so you could put in any way you want there, yeah, from the hands to the elbows, whatever, the other shot you're going to use then, if you're into Cali or your Screamer, whatever you want to call it, you're going to know that those aren't the only tools you can use. When we come in here, I could grab and use my bicep. So I go, one, two, take these off the shore. So when we go in here, I grab and I, I give the bicep the shot here. And then, and then, and then here. Yeah. So I go one, two, two. This doesn't look like much, but you have to feel it. It explodes under the head, your head gets rocked, boom, and then the elbow sails in. Again, because it's so close, sometimes it doesn't look like it can do too much damage. It's like um, if you, one, boom, jik chung choi, and then go elbow, and then elbow, and elbow, and then in. It, doesn't, it isn't meant to be a knockout thing. When I come in here, I'm not trying to knock the guy out. If I throw this, I'm actually trying, if I can, to take the person out. This is a lead in, yeah? And as I said before, when you go, you're going in increments. If I try and jump in and elbow him, very, very difficult. If I come in and then come in here, a little bit easier, yeah? I'm breaking down the range and I'm breaking him down as I enter, yeah? Very, very important. So again, elbows, very good tool mixed in with close range weapons. When you come in, heavy artillery with the hands or with the feet as we're gonna do now, and then boom, and then start exploding in. When you get in here, you're gonna find that the knee is gonna come into play a lot. Probably the best people, yeah, the best are probably the ties with the knee. Phenomenal, phenomenal with the knee, yeah? I'm not a great Thai boxer or kickboxer for that matter, but I really like the way the knee, but I also love the way the, the Cali knee, so I kind of go somewhere in between. So when you go in here, when I knee, I just want to touch, <coughs> boom, and shove this in. Now what I want to do is pull this back and make sure I'm kneeing here. I don't want to, if I knee like this, I can damage my knee. And this is a great bag, it's not too heavy. It doesn't have to be a bottom solid, like this. I want to push, boom, get enough purchase off the bag, you know, without ruining my knee, and also enough purchases, I feel like it's a body or it feels like I'm actually hitting something, yeah? So, when you go in here, boom, and then, relax it, boom, and then, boom, and then, if you're gonna go higher, that's fine too. Sometimes you'll, you'll drop it in, you'll drop it in, or you'll go to the thigh. So your thinking will be, thigh. So if you go in, boom, you're putting the, the shot into the knee, just in between your hitting, or just after the hitting, whatever you choose, whatever's your preference, um, whatever you want to do. Again, boom, you could go lead, push it out, lead, lead it in. And again, if you hit, you can pull it in, nice and easy. You could elbow, knee, 
elbow, knee, elbow, knee. And sometimes, as part of my warm up, this is what I'll do. Just to warm up, just as a flow. And it doesn't look like I'm doing much. I'm not going heavy. All I'm doing is going one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. The elbow, the pull in the knee. Then you could finish with an elbow if you want. Or finish with any combination that you want. The other thing we're going to do is put in a low line kick like a SIPA. Um, or sometimes in Wing Chun it's called a dumb take. Yeah? The SIPA, Filipino, again, isn't designed to be a, a, a killer kick. It's not designed to knock the person out. So if you kick something like this, don't expect them to, uh, to drop. It's, it's a lead in. Yeah? Okay? So when I go like this, again, one, <coughs> boom, just tap it in. It's like passing a football. Like this, yeah. Or <coughs> some people stomp more. That's more like a, a dumb take. <coughs> Boom. And then here. This <coughs> just gives you a little feel for moving. <coughs> and then move back out. Relax. Yeah. One. <coughs> Boom. Move back out. <coughs> Boom. Move back out. So you just generally get a feel for timing off the kick. Or sometimes you'll hit them, you'll move out, <coughs> you'll move back in and then hit them again, yeah? Any one of those things. It's a little bit harder to do the, the C part of the lead. Very, very difficult, yeah? Because you're gonna, you're gonna come in like this, turn it, and then let it go. So my preference is the teep, or the front kick. When you do this, it's really, for me, um, when I uh, done some bouncing, uh, when I was younger, and um, this is a good kick for me because it kept people at bay. I would tell them not to come any further if I had that option if they weren't already in close. I say don't come any further and if they did, I would keep them. Good kick, it doesn't do too much damage in, in terms of long term damage, but it keeps people at bay and it can hit them right in the stomach or stop them in the leg. Yeah? So, <coughs> boom, just push it in, boom, here, <coughs> shove it in. So what you want to do is like lift this up, lift your knee, <coughs> push it in. <coughs> push it in, some relaxed, <coughs> push it in. And again, the same uh, with the kick in applies, uh, the, uh, uh, the same principle applies with the kick in, it applied with the, the punch in, and you don't want to be recoiling off the bag. Yeah? You want to kind of be in control, <coughs> have a good base, move, <coughs> good base, <coughs> good base, boom, whatever one, <coughs> boom, relax, push it, <coughs> teep, relax, Sipa, knee, whatever it is you're doing, just keep that going. Now, the next two things we're going to add are the round kicks. One's going to come from the rear, one from the lead. Um, many different ways you can do it. You, could, you can kick the bag and you can snap it, or you can snap off it low. I like to go a little bit more deep, more, uh, more deeply. So when we kick here, I'm going to go into the side, or into this side, yeah, okay? So when we go, I go nice and relaxed, again, boom, let it go. Let the pack swing, boom, let it go, let it go. Again, the kick kind of wants to be half, half, just a little bit bent here. I don't want it totally straight, I just want to go a little bit bent and then let it go. Um, if you really want to see somebody doing this well, go into a good tie. You'll see the way they kick in. And with this one, the one that I'm doing, it's very similar. It just bangs in here. And a lot of the times when I kick, I'll be moving in. Yeah? So it's going to be a bridge in. Yeah? Rather uh, a hit and back and then move. So again, when we go here, relax it. Wait for it to move. Relax it. Boom. Yeah. Again, gonna be warmed up, nice and relaxed. Let your hip go forward. Drop. If all the power comes from here, as with a punch in, boom, and then drop it in. Next one, same thing basically. Gonna go from the lead leg though. In John Fan, they'll step. There'll be a slide in. Yeah, here. Step and slide, kick, and move back. Yeah. We'll just slide and then move back. You can practice that. Boom. One. And then get back. And then get back. And then get back. Yeah. Just to give you a little feel 
for getting in there. And again, you're going to feel if you do it wrong that the shock will come up through your body. So if I kick it wrong, I'm going to kick it and I, and I feel the shock coming up. I've got to adjust my position. Keep loose up top. Boom. Relax. Back, yeah? Now what I did there, inadvertently, is go back to our tie uh, switch. So when we go, this time we'll switch. Boom, go like this. Whereas before, with the, more the joint fan, and you step in, nice and relaxed. Nice and relaxed then. Like this. This time, switch. So when I move here, you'll see that my body doesn't go back. I don't jump back. Body kind of stays in the same position, move, and move, yeah? But what happens is, lead leg turns, turns to rear, rear leg turns to lead, gives you the push off, it's plyometrics. You don't want to stop and then kick, because then you lose the impetus, they'll, they'll borrow that time, and it'll be in on you. So when you go here, <coughs> relax, nice and easy, <coughs> and then, <coughs> and then, <coughs> and then. And then, yeah. So what have we got so far on the low line? We've got the knee. So what do we say? Knee drops in, either into the thigh or into the stomach. You go into the thigh, basically drop it forward. Boom. And then go into the stomach. Drop it in a little bit more. Different hand positions. Some people will tell you you must keep your hand here. Other people will say you must drop it. Some people will say you keep the elbow up. All of them are right, all of them have a time and place. You have to choose which is right for you. When you go in here, the sepa, yeah? Okay, when you go here, <coughs> boom. Nice and relaxed, just like pushing a football. <coughs> boom. And again, when we go when you go in, <coughs> it's a move that's designed to take us into something. Yeah, okay? It's not it's not designed as a killer blow, yeah. As we said, you can do the sepa and the knee. If we go for the knee of the rear lead, you can do it here too with the same switch that we just did. Here, or you can push your way in. Boom, like this. If you go in, push it in. I prefer the switch. So you may get more impetus. It takes a fraction of a second more, but I feel it's got more power. When we go in here with the, the, the sepa, boom. You can do it, or you can just step in, like this. But again, for me, a little bit difficult to do. I'm not saying it can't be done. If you're doing any trapping, you could lop sound, you could pull, go into the close, and the, the lop sound, grabbing the person's arm, will give you the, the balance for doing the kick. What do we say after that? We're going to the round kick, yeah, okay? Again, for a really good rear kick, you can't beat the ties. They're absolutely superb at it. So if you want a really good round kick, I would say go to a tie. I kind of mix, mix mine between the John Fan and the tie. So it's more inclined towards the tie, but I would say it's, it's got a little tingy John Fan there. So when we go in, here, relax it. <coughs> Boom, and then let it go. <coughs> let it go. Again, <coughs> if you want to go high, that's fine too. <coughs> but the high kicks here <coughs> are more for the flash. I would say go mid-level or go low-level. One other point to address is shin, shin kicking. Unless you're going to uh, compete or a really, really serious way you're training, I would say watch your shins. You could break them, you could seriously damage them. If you're going to shin kick, I would say do it on pads very lightly. Go mostly with the, the instep. Then with the shin, maybe one out of every 10 kicks with the shin until you feel comfortable and then take it from there. But I certainly wouldn't be going shin all the time, even in a bag, which is, this bag is relatively light, I wouldn't be going, you know, shin kicking it all the time. But again, it's up to you. Again, last thing. Here, one, and kick. Relax. Relax. And relax, yeah? Or step in. Back. Back. Right. Now, put the combinations together, anything you want, you want to go hands, feet, boom, move, boom, move, move, 
shoot. Move. So you can floor with anything. You can put the kicks in, put them in with the punches, end with the kicks, start moving, boom, whatever you want. Just um, make sure, again, it's a logical sequence. You're not just throwing this, stepping back, throwing this, going back. It must be logical, it must be coherent. Just to conclude, I hope you enjoyed the tape. Um, I hope we, or I, expressed what I was trying to say fully to you. Basically, the, the heavy bag is an excellent, excellent tool for training, if you use it appropriately. If you just go in the bag and just bang away and, and don't think about it, sure you'll get better, but really, most people nowadays want to get better in less time. And uh, you can do that by thinking about your training, you know, approaching it intelligently, um, using the bag intelligently. Obviously, it's not an opponent, um, but you can treat it as an opponent. You can you can treat it as an imaginary opponent. It can throw punches at you and so forth, but you have to kind of move within. You don't want to just kind of walk up to the bag and just start banging away um, for for no reason whatsoever. Think about what you're doing. I would say start off, at, uh, warm up, either skip, shadow box, get, get your move together. Work on the bag in the beginning, a couple of rounds, maybe even two minute rounds, say three two minute rounds in the bag, come off um, and then work your way up, maybe five threes, five three and a halves, whatever. As long as, as, long as you're gradually progressing and as long as you're, uh, you're not putting more time on it with, uh, when you're diminishing the quality of what you're doing. Keep the quality, that's always more important. Don't do 20 rounds in this bad quality instead of doing five really, really good rounds. So again, Excellent training tool. I would say work it if you can have a bag, a wooden dummy, um, and a speed ball. You're pretty much uh, on top of things. Excellent training tools. Really, really, really good. Hope you enjoyed your tape, and uh, hopefully see you in the next one. Thank you.